Some of the rocks in Jezero Crater clearly were formed in an ancient lake, but before the lake, the crater and the region were covered by olivine-rich deposits of uncertain origin. Perseverance has now collected two samples that point to an explosive history. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. I'll start with a global view of Mars from the color camera of the 1970s Viking orbiter and transition to the gaudy false color topographic view from the laser altimeter on the 1990s Mars Global Surveyor. A region with huge rifts, named Neely Fosse, is a place on Mars with the greatest concentration of the volcanic mineral olivine. Jezero Crater, home to Perseverance, is in the neighborhood. This false color infrared image highlights olivine-rich areas in purple and magenta. This material also occurs in Jezero, including the terrain known as Sita, Navajo for amongst the sand, which Perseverance is exploring. As I noted in episode 32, these rocks look a bit like layered lake deposits, but the textures exposed by the abrading operation tell a different story. The greenish-gray bits in this rock may be olivine, but iron-bearing olivine can be brown. Some of the grains have very angular and irregular shapes that look nothing like grains in lake deposits. Instead, they resemble the shapes seen in volcanic ash deposits from explosive eruptions like in this example from Australia. When bubbles in gas-rich magma burst during eruption, they make these shapes. Elsewhere in the abrasion spot, offset images from the Sherlock camera help highlight details. It uses onboard LED lights for illumination, which create glints from different surfaces. This triangular grain glints in a way that looks like a curved glass shard, which is a common component of volcanic ash. So the grains in this rock could be from an explosive eruption. But where's the volcano? There's a candidate on the rim of Jezero Crater, but it doesn't show purple or magenta colors. So it's not a likely source for the olivine-rich rocks in Sita. On Earth, many rocks formed from explosive eruptions don't come from a recognizable volcano. The ones that give Yellowstone National Park its name are an example. They come from huge calderas, sometimes called supervolcanoes, that are really hard to recognize. They often end up getting buried by their own deposits and also eroded, so the same could be true on Mars. Another major challenge for identifying supervolcanoes on Mars is distinguishing them from all the impact craters. An eroded caldera can look a lot like an eroded impact crater. The answer may have to await the return of samples of the olivine-rich rocks in Jezero. As of last week, Perseverance has collected two drill core samples from these rocks that are part of an expanding collection that will be returned to Earth by a future mission.